Everybody. My name is Dr. Ruth Verhey. I'm a clinical psychologist. I will start my screen sharing. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak at this esteemed conference about mental health in an unequal world. I work at the Friendship Bench and we are all about creating mental health equity. This important publication from a while back has pointed out very well that there is no health without mental health and that we all need to work towards helping everybody to integrate physical and mental health into good health. Why do we need mental health equity? As the World Health Organization is putting out so rightly, health is a fundamental right. Nevertheless, we know that there are health access advantages and disadvantages for vast amounts of populations and the structural determinants that determine access to health are um, beyond people's control which makes it unfair and unethical um, demographical socio-economical political ecological geographical socio-cultural behavioral determinants of health must all be addressed in our way forward to create health equity the universal health coverage is a great um, idea to deliver health for everybody. And in the declaration of Astana in 2018, it was determined that we need access to quality and evidence-based healthcare for everyone everywhere. And that is at facility level, outreach or community level. That all means that we need to create a strong primary, primary healthcare system and the financial risk of illness must be minimized for people. Furthermore, which is really important as well, we need healthcare workers who are delivering this healthcare to be considered and protected so that their well being is not in danger. Poverty, and especially in our area here in Sub Saharan Africa, is a very strong determinant of health. And as Crick Lund, professor from Cape Town, has pointed out that. Poverty is influencing mental health aspects strongly and that we do know that things like low education, food insecurity, inadequate housing, low social class, etc., will increase our prevalence of mental health issues. When I speak about mental health issues, I often refer to common mental disorders such as what we would call depression and anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, substance use disorder. So um, the, evident really, the evidence really supports that we need to scale up mental health care everywhere and put it on our agendas. The UN has done exactly that and with their creation of the sustainable development goals and in particular number three, we are now promoting mental health and well-being as you can see here in the bottom. Fantastic. The WHO has just recently launched an amazing guidance on community mental health services and we at Friendship Bench are proud to be featuring in this compendium. This is available through the WHO website and really reflects an enormous amount of international attempts to deliver evidence-based and accessible healthcare. So the global, global burden of disease and the treatment gap in mental health is still massive. Um, we look at about 30% of people in low and middle income countries, especially when exposed to violence or displacement of about 30%. 
Um, 7.4% of the common mental disorders, CMD, contribute to the global burden of disease. And unfortunately, due to the treatment gap, only up to 10% do receive adequate and evidence-based care. If we now add the pandemic to this, we know that the increase of mental health needs have risen. I'm sorry, that the, in, the, the mental health needs have increased globally. So there's one approach that has been successfully used all over the world in, in physical care and now more and more in mental health care as well, which is called task shifting. I've just brought a few little um, screenshots here of papers. Um, it has been found to be very successful to use community health workers or any kind of lower cater workers who are trained and supervised in specific tasks. The Friendship Bench now is using exactly this approach. We are offering a psychological intervention that is based on CBT, on cognitive behavioral therapy, and mostly there we focus on problem solving therapy. We are um, targeting mild to moderate CMD at a primary healthcare level and community outreach since the, the pandemic. Um, furthermore, we're trying to work on advocacy and sensitization efforts because we believe that stigmatizing will only stop when people have enough good information. The Friendship Bench also offers a, an additional support group with income generation component, which is extremely important as we have seen earlier about the poverty um, influencing mental health There's just, as you can see here, people are crocheting bags out of recycled plastic to sell them later to have an income. So we did a, um, a study in 2015, a randomized control trial, which was very successful. And we were able to prove that our concept works. Um, and our mission now is to provide community-based mental health interventions that are really evidence-based and that are accessible and acceptable for populations, sustainable and scalable. We were lucky enough to have a memorandum of understanding with the Ministry of Health and Child Care in Zimbabwe, which gives us the mandate to nationally scale up. And we really want to integrate mental health program into the existing primary health care, especially when it comes to HIV care. There's a policy that all HIV care should have mental health care in it. So we are working on that. Unfortunately, the mental health budget of the ministries, and that is for a lot of low income countries, um, that, that the budget is very, very small and therefore um, we, we don't have enough of room to, to come in there. Um, what we also found is that despite the efforts of using um, the WHO program MHGAP to educate healthcare workers, that there's a lack of confidence in screening for common mental disorders. Um, and often um, we were told that people think, so if I screen, then where do I send them? Or what do I do with the people? So there's this lack of confidence in referral pathways that we also have to strengthen. And those mental health trained staff that we have often work somewhere completely different. Just to show you, we often get called the program of grandmothers. And that is really just the case because the community health workers or health promoters who we are working with in Zimbabwe have been working in this position for a very long time and literally have gone old <laughs> over the time. And uh, in, the, in the population, they were often called Ambuya Utana, which translates to grandmother health. The friendship bench programs um, are very wide. Um, we obviously offer community mental health for adults. Since the pandemic, we have also focused on an online component as we had to rethink our activities. We have international callers coming in, often especially Zimbabweans from the diaspora. We have a youth friendship bench program that we hope to be publishing results of our trial very soon, which was very successful, which compared using the community health workers with a younger cater, namely students who are in attachment with friendship bench. Then, like I said already, we are working very closely with partners on the HIV and mental health care components. 
And we are proud to say that we by now have established friendship benches in other countries, Malawi, we're in Zanzibar, Kenya, in Jordan, and in the US and New York. Another program that we're very, very um, proud of as well, and we see the importance, especially with the non-communicable diseases and the overlap and comorbidity with mental health issues, is our latest, um, we also hope to publish very soon a lot more data from our, from our work. And we are, like, we're trying out to figure out if we can use the community health workers to help detect and manage and refer, and then hopefully the clients get back referred to them in the community, those who have not been found yet and not been diagnosed yet with um, hypertension and diabetes especially. Um, our Young People Living with HIV program was also run with another partner who works with um, an approach of using young people to help other young people. Um, and we found in our data that the Friendship Bench component in this program, besides the helping with getting tested and medication adherence, was very successful in terms of decreasing their mental health symptoms as measured by our local tools. We want to work on promotion and prevention through awareness. And we all understand that if we don't promote healthy lives, if we don't promote knowledge, we will not be able to prevent those kind of issues that people will experience when they suffer from mental health or ill mental health, I should say. So we're doing a lot in terms of increasing awareness and teaching about it. We mobilize clients um, effectively, and that is done by the community health workers as well. We work on radio and TV shows wherever we can do podcasts. Um, if you feel like it, please do look at our um, website, but there's a lot of material that can be distributed or even used by oneself. As we all know, people in, who work in the health like care area um, do have a lot of stress on their plates. It's a very extremely, I would say, stressful job. And it's important that we start with self-care that we then try to teach to our clients. What makes our program interesting is the sustainability. So we really, as I said before, are integrated into the existing primary healthcare system. And we want to do that on purpose. So here you see two of our long-standing grandmothers from Harare. We live in Mbare, one of the biggest townships really close to the city center. And as they are employed by the health authorities, they not only have a regular income, hopefully, but they also are very integrated into the community. So they live in the same community as they work. And so that means they really know their people. And as we all know in our area, elderly people are very, very respected. And therefore these people have to these women, mostly women, we have a few men, but not that many. These women have the authority to walk up to people, to walk up to houses, to go into houses and ask what's going on and literally um, encourage people to either come to the clinic for testing or bring their children or just talk to them. So I was interested in their well being and I did a study on um, their, their emotional help basically and we found um, that there was a potential resilience of exactly this cater um, and we do put it down to the fact as the literature shows as well that helping others helps ourselves and that they often were bread winners in their families and have an enormous amount of experience um, in the job, dealing with people, and should really be remunerated much, much, much higher. And we must all increase our appreciation and respect for community health workers who are often describing that the little pay they get and the lack of career pathways for them is actually um, a barrier to their work and to their motivation. Nevertheless, the group of community health workers all over seems to have a big amount of intrinsic factors such as passion, wanting to make a change, really, really taking in the appreciation of those they help and those they care for. Um, but nevertheless, I think in, in future, we do need to increase our respect and appreciation for community health workers much more. 
Um, I just thought I'll bring you another picture of, of one of our colleagues. Um, and she's actually working on the phone because not only do we offer online counseling, we also do online training now because of the pandemic. And for some of these women, I, I think our oldest is 91 years old. This doesn't come intuitively. So we have to do a lot of training on how to use um, digital media and technology. Thank you very much for your time and your energy and your interest in this important topic. And um, please do follow us on social media and look at our website. Thank you so much.